right, let's do the offside, the driver's side. Do the same. Just putting this under here just so I can lever it. And when I do it, you can probably see. I'll show you the top mount. All right, so before we jack it up, we loosen the drive shaft nut with a 32mm impact socket and just loosened off the wheel bolts with a 19mm. So we'll just go ahead and take the wheel off now. Okay, one of the best things I can say when you're going to be working on suspension is get some impact sockets. A lot of these bolts, this is the knuckle to strut pinch bolt, and um, a lot of these won't have been removed since the car was made and if that was a few years ago they'll have rusted up quite nicely. Now this is a normal 19mm socket, you see there are lots of different corners as it were. And on the impact socket we haven't got as many and that means that we've got fewer sides and so it's a much better fit as you can see. On a normal socket if we apply a lot of force through this we're a lot, like, a lot more likely to round off the, the actual corners. Whereas the impact socket grabs the sides as well, so that's a little less likely to happen. So that's the best tip I can give you. Okay, so wheel off. I've got the car jacked up. Under there. I don't know if you can make it out. That's what we need to do. I need to get this nut off the bottom of here, off the uh, track rod end, take that off, take the ABS sensor off, there's a nut here, so let's get that off, I need to take the brake rotor off, and there's two bolts here which take the caliper off, we can take that off in one piece, we don't need to take the brake pads out first, I've um, got an axle stand to put the brake caliper on, there, We'll probably zip tie it to that, and then you can see back here I've got another caliper stand for when we take the drive shaft out here. We can just let it, let it rest on that axle stand. You don't want to let that get down, let that bend too much, uh, otherwise, it may pop out at the other end. It's not actually tied in, so you need to avoid that. Then we've got a nut. Here, that's attaching the suspension strut to the knuckle. And then at the bottom, we've got this annoying pinch bolt down here. This will probably be, give you the most grief. That's one end of it, the T45. I think this is either a 17 or a 15 mil. On this end, this is where you're going to apply most of the force. Probably be a good idea to get some WD 40 or plus gas on it the night before. Um, even though I did that, it still took me a good half an hour to get out. I uh, ended up tapping it through once I'd got that bolt off. Sorry, the nut off at this end. Okay. Oh, and I nearly forgot. You need to do this, this off as well. Take this nut off. That attaches the link between the anti-roll bar here to the suspension strut. Okay, so we take the brake caliper off and just suspended it there and zip tied it to the uh, axle stand. There's two 13 mil bolts, just needed to take that off. I forgot to mention on the bottom of the track rod end bolt, if I can just get it into view, there's a cotter pin in there. I think Americans call it a cotter pin. I can't remember what the hell we call it. So we just need to take that out of there. Then this bottom pinch bolt, that I think is a 15 mil. And the top pinch bolt there at a, a 19, I believe. So, this is my pin that was securing the track rod end nut. As you can see, it's quite shiny and new because the last time I tried to take this out, it was completely rusted. I ended up just taking the ends off, having to put a uh, impact socket over the end of it and just wiggling it forth to break, break it, break the ends off inside the segments of the nut and then take the nut off and then have to hammer a pinch bolt, a 
pin punch through the hole in the actual threaded bit of the track rod end so that I could get this new one in and I'll put it back later. You could probably use the end of an Allen key or a very small screwdriver to hammer the debris through and clear out the hole. Okay, so that's the end of it. Now I've got the nut off and you can, might just, just be able to see the hole where the pin goes through. The contrast isn't great, sorry. Now in order to get the track red end off here, you could use a ball joint splitter to go into here, but you might split the rubber, in which case you'll have to replace the track rod end because that's an MOT failure. What often you might find better is to get a hammer. It doesn't have to be a brilliant, massive, it doesn't have to be a massive lump hammer, just a standard hammer, and hit where it goes through, always hit where it goes through, on there, while pulling up on the track running with the other hand and after it took me the first time I did it's about 10 hits hopefully it should only take about three hits this time but you need both hands to do it so I'm gonna can't do it on film okay I must have loosened it off because that only took a couple of hits so it wasn't in this tight but then I only had this off last weekend so it came out quite easy this time okay something I did forget to mention was taking off these securing the pipes to the strut and the knuckle. You can see oh, just about there's another one in here. This just needs a good wiggle and then that's off. Just taking the ABS sensor out from behind here. It's just an eight mil bolt help eight mil bolt out of that. And just be careful when you get the hub out. This is the ABS ring around here. Just make sure you don't damage it. Okay, I've just taken the lock nut off this end of the uh, pinch bolt. Always faces the rear of the car. So make sure you put it on the right way. Um, if this is now quite rusted in, you may just need to tap this out. But you need to be very careful that you don't mushroom the head of this here, which will prevent the nut from going back on when we fit it back in. Uh, I mean, if, if it is really rusted in, you do need to use a lot of force and hammer this out. You're probably going to knack at the threads on the end, so be aware that you might need to go and get a new bolt uh, and nut for the end. Okay, so we now have the two pinch bolts securing the lower arm to the and the strut to the knuckle. So all I need to do now is finish taking off the drive shaft nut. I loosen this because this has a huge amount of force applied to it to secure it. Um, so we loosen this with the wheels on the ground because um, you won't be able to apply enough force otherwise to get this off. Um, but since it's loosened that should be fairly straightforward. And then it'll just be a case of popping a lower arm nut out of there, a ball joint out, I say just. That could be rusted in as well. And then we can just tap down and wiggle on the top of the knuckle, tap gently on here, and then we can get the knuckle off. Uh, as I said before, whilst we pull the drive shaft out as we're taking this off, sorry, we'll pull the drive shaft out first before we take the knuckle off the strut. That's important. Um, don't let the drive shaft drop. This is this is why I've got this other jacking um, sorry axle stand to catch that and allow it to rest on there. If you let it drop too far, it'll pop out, um, and then we'll have to pull the drive shaft out to put it back together. So that wouldn't be smart. Okay, before we take the lower ball out, ball joint out of the knuckle, lower this um, under this a few turns first. That'll give us a bit more room. Um, you might need to put an Allen key in here. Well, you will need to put an Allen key into here, and then use an open-ended offset spanner, such as this. Only a spanner like that will allow you to get it in there. Um, so you're going to need one of these. I've already taken the lower ball joint out, um, as you can see. Now, to do this, there's a handy little hole in the lower arm there. If you can get your pry bar or your handy long breaker bar into that hole, um, that'll give you some leverage. Hopefully, since we've undone the pinch bar, this should just pop out. If it's rusted in, <coughs> you may need to get a breaker bar, pry bar, and if your crowbar, whatever. 
<coughs> into here, well, into between the bottom of the knuckle, so the bottom of the knuckle in there, and the lower arm, and apply some force. And but be very careful not to split this, because if you split this, that's an MOT failure as well. Let me just get my focus. Um, I'm taking, replacing just the ball joint is quite difficult as this this is riveted on. So unless you want to get an angle grinder and punch this out, it may be easy just to spend forty pound and replace the whole lower arm. So ideally, you don't want to be doing that. When you take the uh, lower ball joint out, there'll be a little plastic piece in here which sits over the end of the ball joint and just protects the brake disc from any grease that might come out of the seal if this were to rupture. Um, so just be aware of that. Sometimes these are metal. This one's like a plasticky rubber. Um, so that needs to go back on. And you can make the job fiddly when we replace it. So just put that aside for the time being. Okay, so we've got nearly everything off now. We've undone the track rod end. Taken off the link to the anti-roll bar, which connects to the strut there. Taken off the brake caliper, the brake disc. We've undone, we've released brake pipe from this clip on the strut. We've taken out the anti um, ABS sensor, which also clips onto this bit on the knuckle as well. So we need to release all that and just probably actually best if we tuck that through there and make, just make sure it's out of the way so it doesn't get damaged. And um, undone the pinch, pinch bolt at the top and the one at the bottom and popped out the lower arm ball joint. So now all we need to do is push the drive shaft through here catch it on said axle stand and then we should be able to start tapping this off and wiggling it off and get the knuckle out. Okay so I've started tapping the drive shaft through here just want to pull the hub forward slightly and then what I actually did was use hang on so I just used the end of this tool popped it in the center of there and then just given it a few taps on this end with my trusty lamp hammer there. Oh, it's bright. Um, and then that's just started to move out, and now it moves fairly freely. Um, okay, so there's the drive shaft out. It's just supported on the axle stand back there. And we're now ready to pull. We'll start tapping the hub off from up here. It's bright, so sorry about the contrast on this. And there we go, one knuckle and hub. What I actually did, ended up just tapping it with my rubber hammer here. So damaging the knuckle, and it came off fine. Um, so now, let's see, the whole strut, it's free to come out. So if we probably if we put a block of wood in there, stop that from dropping down and falling out. And we can undo this top nut and then we should be able to withdraw the whole strut from the car. Okay, I've got my block of wood under there. I'll stop it from falling out. And now up here, again, we need to hold the central threaded section off the top of the strut with an Allen key piece to connect it to that wrench. And then we've got our offset head 19 mil spanner, which we're actually going to use to undo the nut. Okay, as this gets towards the end, we start undoing it with our, just about with our fingers, which means you then got the other hand free to hold onto the strut and catch it 